Hello everyone. In today's session, we're going to be discussing a bit about routing. I really wanted to, to take it from scratch because uh, for a beginner, it can be a bit overwhelming. Uh, there are lots of options and topologies and uh, sometimes uh, it might not work as you'd expect it on, uh, for example, a traditional router. Now, if you get your basis right, at least you have a blueprint in your head. Uh, and then can start modifying a few parameters and understanding how a solution would fit a more complicated customer. So let's start from the beginning. We have two edges, one on the left, one on the right. We have a cloud gateway that they share as a controller. And what would be the easiest way to kind of turn on the routing? Well, it's simply to use the VeloCloud overlay between those two edges. VeloCloud uses something that's called VCRP, VeloCloud Routing Protocol. Well, it's a proprietary routing protocol that is very similar to BGP. Uh, and as you all well know, uh, uses this concept of gateways as a root reflector between the edges. So two edges with um, Cloud VPN turned on will rely on the gateway to learn how to connect to each other and also what routes the other edges are advertising. So the next question is, okay, how can we easily advertise a route? Well, to be honest, it's as easy as going on a particular VLAN or on a particular routed interface and just ticking that advertise box. So if we have a network here, 10, 0, 0, 0, 24, and a uh, 10, 0, 1, 0, 24, we can just advertise them. The, the gateway then reflects it to uh, the peers that are part of the same profile. Uh, remember that uh, if you're doing any sort of profile isolations, the edges don't, will not communicate with each other. And then that's it. You have a packet coming in. The edge looks in its routing table and says, okay, I, I need to use the overlay to reach the other side. Now, if you want to introduce some um, routing protocols, we start with a simple static route. So you can uh, define a static route and click advertise, and that will propagate it from the local edge all the way to the other edges that uh, are part of the same VPN topology. But obviously, as you're looking to scale things, you're probably looking at uh, something more dynamic. So uh, part of that we have support for both SPF and BGP. There are uh, a few nuances with each. Uh, a lot of people like to use BGP because, first of all, uh, uh, OSPF only supported on the global segment. And uh, BGP is far more flexible because it actually allows you to carry attributes. So if you are extending BGP from one side to the other, although you're using the VeloCrowd proprietary protocol to route between the edges, the BGP attributes, uh, let's say um, AS path, uh, get carried across. And you can then use things such as filters to also more accurately manipulate what you want uh, the edges to redistribute and learn. One thing to note with uh, OSPF is if you are redistributing any sort of uh, internal routes, although we allow you to extend that OSPF to the other side, they will appear here as uh, external routes. And any sort of external routes on the originator side will then be marked as E2. So really do remember that, that although you extend the OSPF to uh, the other sites via the overlay, the routes will actually appear as external on the remote locations. Now, I did previously mention that uh, BGP is preferred. Uh, not only because it works across uh, all the segments, uh, but also that it has that granularity that features such as uh, filters will uh, bring. Nothing is stopping you actually having a BGP on one side uh, and uh, OSPF on the other. So uh, although maybe less common, um, this is uh, also supported. Just be careful about uh, the redistribution uh, in itself. So routes redistributed from BGP on this side, they tend to get marked as 
uh, E1 uh, or E2. And this depends on the neighbor flag that you will set up on the edge here. So uh, when you set up the adjacency, there is a neighbor flag and this will actually change the type of external route the OSPF will see. Two things to mention before I show you a few things inside the orchestrator. The routing in SD1 can be complex because there are lots of overlays, there are lots of ways to learn routes as opposed to a traditional flat MPLS network. Uh, we have a feature called the overlay flow control, which is a global routing table. The way that I look at it is uh, that is the routing table of the overlay. So how, if I want to exit the overlay, what are my available paths and which one is preferred? Secondly, not related to that, uh, is that from code 4.0, uh, bidirectional forward detection is supported. Uh, so now, if you are peering with, uh, let's say, BGP, and you have some issues with the link, uh, you don't rely on the BGP timers to reconverge the network. Some people don't really like to play around with timers and reduce them uh, to the bare minimum. But if you, without BFD, if you don't do that, then the BGP peering will most likely uh, stay up 60, 90 seconds, etc., and you'll basically black all traffic. Uh, so again, since 4.0, uh, you will be able to configure BFD to just help with that fast reconvergence. So now hopping into the orchestrator itself, all the routing is done on uh, either the edge or the profile level. Remember that the easiest way is to either uh, add VLANs and advertise them or use any sort of routed interfaces. You'll see here uh, an advertisement tick box and that will get the edge to again uh, advertise them across in the overlay to the other uh, edges. You then have this idea of Static routes, in which, uh, as per any other static route, you tell it what the subnet is, what the next stop and interface are. Um, if you prefer that, um, in case there, there might be uh, routes with, uh, with lower cost, but you're keen to use that, you can toggle this here. And uh, this button to advertise. The reason that I'll, I'll leave this unchecked is, for example, maybe I'm just using this static route locally, but I have no interest in advertising this to any remote locations. Last but not least, you can set up ICMP probing. Right, so this is a great tool uh, to allow you not to black hole traffic. You just run the ping towards a particular uh, endpoint or device that will guarantee that the path is up. And if something happens and the uh, route goes down, uh, you stop advertising it. Scrolling down, you uh, can see uh, the OSPF settings on top and also the BGP ones on the bottom. So you just turn this off. You click Edit to add all your neighbors. Most SD1 implementations use external uh, BGP to peer with, uh, with the neighbors. You can specify uh, inbound and outbound filters. It's quite granular. You can match based on prefix and community, and then uh, you can then start uh, setting uh, different uh, types of parameters. Uh, for example, if you have multiple ways to uh, to get to a destination, you can prepend uh, the AS path, make it longer, and then the route will actually not be preferred as opposed to another path that you want. Uh, SD1 solution to take. You can obviously use these filters as well to uh, stop the uh, unwanted redistribution and the edge learning certain routes. So for example, if you'd rather not want the edge to learn the default route, just in case that might mess things up, you can create a filter to say, you know, deny the default route. Last but not least, if you want to go uh, into granular settings, uh, you'll see here, uh, this is the neighbor flag. I'm gonna refer back to it a bit later because we, we use it in different ways at the branch and at the data center. And here you can manipulate things such as the timers uh, and also the authentication in case uh, that 
you have set a password for the peering to come up. Now, if you just use uh, internet as a transport between uh, your different sites, uh, everything is quite clear. You know, you downstream, you learn some routes, you then redistribute it in the overlay, and then um, all the remote sites have to take the overlay to get back to you, right? There is no other way. So everything crystal clear. Now, there are a few complexities that might arise depending on your setup if you are using a hybrid approach. And by hybrid, I mean that we're using both internet and MPLS as a transport between our sites. So here we are with two different branch types, one with an edge that has direct connectivity to the internet and the MPLS, and one where the edge has only a connection to the internet. It will then appear with a routing protocol with a layer three switch, and then that will have a different connection to uh, the PE router. Obviously, there are different ways to set up the edge, but I think these two scenarios and the contrast between them uh, will allow me to explain the best practices uh, when using things such as uplink flag and community. And the reason why we have to be careful here is that if we choose to peer uh, directly with the underlay, right, because nobody's stopping us to create a BGP connection, the branch itself might become a transit site if you are not careful. So, for example, the branch here can learn via the overlay that it can reach the legacy site via the DC and also via branch one. And for a particular reason, it might prefer branch one. So this is where your device here will get overloaded because it will become a transit to the legacy sites. The easiest way to avoid this, and this is my recommendation because it will make your life much, much easier, is to never peer with the underlay. Right? Just use the underlay as use the internet to create the overlay tunnels. And then the only way that you can reach these legacy sites is through the overlay. And again, that can be either via the public or the private lines. Now, sometimes during migrations or uh, if you have, for example, any applications that are sensitive to delay, you might be forced to then think about peering directly with the underlay. things such as uh, BGP. And then this will actually allow you to learn the legacy branch via this connection as well. So now the edge here knows, hey, in order for me to get to the legacy branch, I can either go through the DC edge via the overlay or directly via the underlay. Now, in order for us to stop the branch becoming a transit, what we need to do is that we need to stop the redistribution between the underlay and overlay. Because this means that the rest of the state will never be in a position to consider branch one as a possible option to get to the legacy sites. So for this scenario, what we'll do is that we will use the uplink flag inside the BGP settings. So if you remember when I showed you the BGP configuration, there was an uplink flag you can select. And you will select that for this peering here. And when we do so, this will tell branch one never to redistribute between overlay and underlay. Now, I did mention previously that uh, this flag uh, is used differently from branch to the data center. And inside uh, the data center, inside the, the hub here, we actually use it to specify what path takes priority. When I go to the legacy branch from branch one, should I take the overlay or should I take the underlay if both options are available? And this is where this uh, priority tab comes in, uh, which you will find in the overlay flow control page, by the way. And you see here we have four different options. So if we learn the same route from an edge, we'll always prioritize that. Then we go towards the partner gateway, Router means a route learned via a, a routing protocol, so that will mean an underlay route. And hub 
well, this is the fun part. And this is something that was quite confusing for me because the first time I looked at this, I thought that maybe uh, an edge means that a different branch and a hub means the hub, but that's not really the case. So let me explain. If we don't do any settings at the hub, if we don't trigger any uplink flag in the peering that allows the hub to learn the legacy route, it will, uh, it will need a BGP peering with the DC switch to know about the legacy branch itself. The hub will always be preferred. Again, don't be confused by the naming here because the branch will always prefer routes learned from other edges via the overlay as opposed to router routes, the ones that use the underlay. But the whole purpose of me peering with the underlay was to have an option to go directly to the MPLS and to the legacy branch and then keep the overlay as a fallback. So in this case, what we do is that we go in this peering here at the hub and flag it. So in the same way that you flag the branch here in order to stop it become transit, you will flag the hub. And this means that the route that the hub is advertising, the legacy branch, will then become a hub route. And in our scenario, this means that we will prefer the underlay route because it has a better priority than the hub. The first time I read about this, I thought, well, wait a minute. I thought that once we select uplink flag here, uh, the edge will not actually redistribute the routes. So if you're confused, I understand that. But if you look inside the overlay flow control page, Besides the VPN preferred exits, which you'll have them listed here, you will see that by default, edges don't advertise uplink routes. Again, we don't want them to do so, but hubs do. And that is why you have a different section for the edge at the branch and then the hub inside the data center. Because again, uplink flag has a different effect. For the branch, it stops advertising it through the rest of the estate in the overlay. But for the hub, it allows it to drop in priority and change the way that routing works. And one of the reasons that I've uh, drawn branch number two, which we haven't discussed so far, was that uplink flag, when used to stop the branch becoming transit, it's quite clear when the edge gets presented with both the internet and the MPLS link. But what happens here when the edge itself peers with the layer three switch? Let's say I have a BGP peering here. And the layer three switch onwards peers with the PE router. Now, if I turn on the uplink flag on the edge in branch number two, that will stop it redistributing in the overlay all the routes, including the local area network. And I'm trying to avoid that. So, how can we differentiate between the local routes and the routes that are advertised by the PE. So we stop only those PE routes to be redistributed inside the overlay. And this is where we don't use uplink flag, we use communities. So as long as we have marked these routes with a different community, this will actually allow the edge to block the redistribution of those particular routes. Now, two things I, I like to mention here. Um, first of all, uh, we do have a concept of administrative distance to compare between uh, different routing protocols. So if we learn uh, the same route in the overlay via OSPF internal uh, E and IBGP and OSPF external routes, they do have a, a priority from best to worst. So be mindful of that. And although I have not written it down here, you also have the concept of metric. So this is the way that as per any routing protocol, you will compare two different routes that come from the same protocol. 